From the fundamentals of testing, we have learned that testing is all about writing test cases and executing them in order to meet the expected outcomes. But just writing the test cases are not enough. There are a lot of many other things which does happen as a part of the test management and uh, preparation of the test cases under test design phase. So identifying the test data or preparing the test suites uh, deriving and prioritizing the test cases in order to execute them in the right sequences additionally important things which need to be performed as a part of the life cycle model or a particular phase which we have to take care of when working with the tools as well but yes that was all to understand more about the test plan and now we will be getting into the test executions so today we will be understanding how you can import these prepared test cases in test lab of the ALM and design them in executable manner, preparing the test suites or defining the prioritization and also determining some of the execution condition to determine that in what order finally the test case will be executed. So there are a lot of things to explore, but yes, let's understand some of the basics of the test execution today first, and then we will be getting into the details of the same. So and greetings for the day welcome back to another episode of testing in nutshell this is Nish Kumar saying and today we are talking about the test lab module of ALM so let's understand a little more about the same so in the previous tutorial we have understood a lot about the test plan so last two tutorials we have explored how exactly a test can be created how exactly the test steps can be organized and created for example in login we have created design steps using parameters which with help of which we can actually pass multiple set of uh, test data and have requirement coverage here which will allow you to link the requirement to the test which also helps you to in turn get a status update if the test passes or fails in future additionally we also know about how we can convert the requirements directly into test to minimize our further efforts to a higher extent now let's move to the test lab in this tutorial in order to understand how a test can be imported and executed. But before that, we have a lot many interesting things to explore in ALM. So first of all, as usual, you will create a new folder, which is your project folder and say, OK. Once you have created this folder, you can directly assign this folder to a particular cycle that what is that you are going to do here. So say, for example, in this cycle, I'm linking it to component testing just to tell you that how exactly it can happen. It also shows you a detail that what kind of interaction or what number of days you have to do this job. Now, within this, you can create a new test set. Remember team, in test plan, it is new test and here it is new test set, which can also be referred to our standard name test suite, where we have different examples of a particular test being called together. So create a new test set and say we are testing it for login what type of test set it is it's default you may have further details on the type of the execution if you have included any kind of baseline from the libraries you can make use of that if not you can just leave it empty but generally in professional world you do that when it is going to be closed so you can define a date end date for running this that means before this date or on this date it should be closed so say for example 30 but it should be under my cycle timeline, whatever I have defined. Status of the execution, probably based on the date, it should be either open or close. So everything has to be updated manually by a analyst. Say OK. Once you create a test set, you get another set of details which you can use in order to list your test. So to call your test from the test plan, you use this button called as select test. Click on select test. And this will show you the tree of the test plan. Just expand it in order to see a test folder and get the test imported. So to import a test to the test lab, you have to reach to that particular test where you have written the test cases and import it. Now remember, as I import, we have used parameters. So we have now being asked for the actual value. And what is that you want to run this test with? Is it the default value or you want to try with any other value? So my first case will be always with the valid set of data. So I can use copy default value 
and select the second step and say copy default value. So this means that I'll be using the valid set of data for my first iteration and say OK. Now one instance of the test has been created. Now again import the same test for the second instance. So it will prompt you that one instance already exists. Is that you want to create the second instance of it? Yes. Say OK and it will again prompt you for the actual values for this instance. So first one we tried with valid. So let's try with valid username and invalid password here. So for username, I'll go with copy default. And for password, I'll use an invalid password. So drop down here to write the invalid password. Say H-E-L-L-O in caps and dot one. Instead of or at the rate one, I'm using dot one. Say OK. And then press OK. So now the second instance of login two will include the new set of data. Similarly, import it again and create rest of the instances. So this time I'm trying with invalid username. So password remains valid and username will be changed. So say H-E-L-L. -L. Okay, you should drop it down in order to edit that. H-E-L-L. -L. Okay, and press OK. Now let's create one more so that we have some good number of tests to run and say OK. This time I'm going to do use both of them invalid. So say H-E-L-L -L at the rate 1 and say OK. And for this H-E-L-L. -L. OK. So now we have tried with different combinations. So here you understand that how exactly a test can be imported to test lab. And if you are making use of parameters, this is how you can pass the actual value for creating different runs of the same test with a different set of test data. Once you are done, you can close this test plan tree, which is no longer required. And you have a lot of details associated with the different instances created. So let's understand some more important thing about the test lab. On the top, we get two options. One is execution grid and execution flow. Where execution grid shows you the list of all the tests to be executed, an execution flow shows the test execution schedule, which includes the dependency and the uh, criteria that how exactly it will be executed. So right now, as we have imported them independently, they all are directly independent on the login test. That means any test can be executed in any order. But right now here, using execution flow, I can define dependencies. What if I want to run login two, that is an invalid test, only after the login one has passed. So to do that, you have to double click on the login two icon and you will be shown the window for dependencies. So you have execution condition and you have time dependency. Let's create a execution condition first. Where execution condition says that test two login runs only if test one Okay, test one has passed. So until unless test one passes, people will not execute the second test. This is just to be understood. The tool will not restrict you to execute any test, but this execution flow will tell us what should be executed in what order. So we have added this and say, okay. So now you will see the two comes below that with a green arrow, where green arrow represents that login one should pass in order to run login two. But now you see that if login one has passed, three, four, and two, all of them can be executed in any order. So let's define again dependency for the other ones. So the same dependency will be applied to other tests as well. Login one should pass in order to run the next test. Okay. What is time dependency? You can even set up a time that it should not be executed before this date and this time. So if you have set this, even if a tester tries to run that, it will not be possible to run. So it's just that it's going to restrict the execution, but this option doesn't mean that the test will run automatically on this date at this time. No. So just feel it to use that option if you want to restrict the use of it. Say OK. Now you see 3 is and 2 are independent of each other, but dependent on 1. Similarly, you can do that for 4 as well. So double click add execution condition 
on the stage test one okay you should have passed and say okay so different colors will be used in order to define that now you see that login one is the test parent test and the other three will be dependent on that so let's go back to execution grid you won't see any changes here because it is only the list of all the tests to be executed whereas execution flow shows you the dependency of the test Another thing important to understand here is the run option and run test set. The run option allows you with three options. One is the sprinter, which is an add-in, which gives you an extra option to have the manual execution of your test with snapshots, video recording, and a lot more options with editing of these, you know, application and taking a snapshot of that. Whereas the general option is run with manual runner, which allows you to run a test and capture the details manually like actual results status of the test and so on continue manual run is only for that case where you you know paused your execution during executing a test so you started the execution but due to some reason you could not complete it then you can use the continue manual manual run in order to avoid a second iteration of the test but if you want to rerun that like from the beginning the second iteration will be counted whereas Run test set allows you to run multiple tests in one go. For example, if you click on run button here, that is by default run manual runner, it will run that particular test and stop. You have to come back to the execution grid, pick up the second test and run it. But run test set will take all four tests at the same time. As you complete test one, it continues with the test two. You complete test two, it continues with test three. So all the tests in the execution grid will be continuously one after the other executed. You don't have to close your execution window and come back to the test lab in order to select the next test. That's the benefit of run test set. And additionally, if you are integrated with any other uh, automation testing tool like UFT and Load Runner, it allows you to link all those details here. And you can also have an automatic runner, which will only launch UFT to run the test and capture the details automatically here. So we won't be covering this as a part of this tutorial as we do not have an integration possibility. So that was quite interesting to understand here. We will be having more details in the next video and understanding more about that. So I hope that the tutorial was quite interesting for all of you to understand that how exactly ALM can build up the test in order to execute them, align them in different manners and sometimes also understanding that if you have made use of parameters, how you can actually pass the actual values for the execution. But that's not all. We have got a lot to cover as a part of test lab. Thus, we will be looking into the second part of it and understanding in more detail of that. So stay tuned for the upcoming tutorials. So that's all from this particular episode team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.